Let's go live to the Environment Water Minister, Tanya Plibersek now. Tanya, thanks so much for your time. We just heard there what Shane Oliver had to say. What do you think about that? Well, we've had very clear advice from Treasury that uh, our better tax changes uh, won't add to inflation. And the reason for that is they encourage people back into the workforce or to work more hours. Uh, we know that people are doing it tough now. And so we've got a tax package that gives every single Australian taxpayer a tax cut, but gives people on middle and lower incomes a bigger tax cut. So more people get a bigger tax cut. What about the, um, the Greens push now for... Uh, they've essentially said this morning, look, if you increase job seeker, you've got a deal in the Senate. Is that something that you're actively considering? Look, I would be really disappointed if uh, either the Liberals or the Nationals or the Greens stood in the way of this bigger, fairer tax cut for more Australians. Mm -hmm. and, and I think Australians would be pretty impatient with that, I have to say. Like, he here we have a scenario where, you know, someone on um, $75,000, $80,000 a year will get a, a, a you know, $1,600 uh, extra in their pockets to, to be standing in the way of that, I think, would be profoundly unfair. People need help with the cost of living. We obviously want to give them a bigger tax cut. Uh, we're also you know, going to continue with other measures like um, Mark Butler's very good work in increasing bulk billing. We've seen an, an extra uh, 360,000 bulk billed visits to the doctor just in the last couple of months. Um, we'll continue to do uh, all of the work we've done with cheaper childcare, um, you know, supporting lower energy bills, free TAFE. Um, it, it, there's a range of things that we're doing, mm. but to stand in the way of this tax cut for middle and lower income uh, earners, I think would be profoundly uh, unpopular if uh, any of the other parties did that. Would you consider increasing job seeker though? Well, we, 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 we've been um, terrifically supportive of people on benefits since coming to government. We, we've seen substantial increases in pensions and in JobSeeker under this Labor government. Mm. We've seen the biggest increase in Commonwealth rent assistance in 30 years. Uh, what we're offering now is a tax cut, a bigger tax cut for more Australians. Yeah. Uh, and the, the other parties should get out of the way of that. They should be supportive of it. They should, I think, in fact, be welcoming it. But that didn't sound like a no. I know you're not the Treasurer. Well, I, I mean, look, I'm, I'm not in the Senate negotiating with the crossbench, yep, okay. but I would be very surprised if, uh, if the Greens mm. stood in the way of this tax cut. And frankly, I'd be very disappointed if the Liberals and Nationals uh, stood in the way of it. That This is a tax cut for every single Australian taxpayer and uh, middle income earners in particular yeah. get a much bigger tax cut than they were expecting. And people on low incomes were going to miss out entirely under Scott Morrison's yeah. original proposal. They'll now get a tax cut. It's now looking a little unwieldy ahead of those uh, Senate negotiations next week. Uh, you have in the AFR this morning the headline there that Labor is looking more closely at family trust. We also have Bill Kelty saying, look, there should be a further look by this government at things like negative gearing. Do you think that should happen? <laughs> We've got a very full tax agenda. We're not, um, you know, we're not just doing the uh, cuts to personal income tax. Uh, we're also uh, we've got the changes to the um, petroleum resources uh, mm. tax. We've got uh, changes to multinational tax rates. Uh, we've got a very full agenda. The, the Treasurer, Jim Chalmers, uh, Andrew Lee uh, and others have been working uh, very hard to make sure that we've got a, a fairer, more sustainable tax base here in Australia. I don't yeah. think we're. I don't think we're in the business on ta of taking on it. No, extra but you can understand why uh, people negotiations might be when we nervous. haven't even got the income tax rates. Yeah, sure. But you can parliament. understand why people might be a little bit sceptical, um, thinking that this is the path you might go down. You have taken it to a previous uh, election. Uh, now, um, is it something you could seek a mandate on? 
Oh, we're not we're not discussing it. There's been no discussions mm. about uh, those um, other things that uh, negative gearing, for example, that's been raised. There's been no discussions about that. What we are in the business of doing is making sure that more than 10 million Australians get uh, more of their take home pay uh, in their pockets with a tax cut and that those tax cuts are um, better targeted to people on middle and low incomes that would otherwise miss out. To be fair, that's what Albo did say about stage three. Uh, Sorry, what, um, he what said did he there say? were no discussions. What, mean, what did he say? Sorry, he about? said there were no discussions about, you know, stage oh. three tax cut until there was, of course. So that's why there's yeah. a little well, bit of scepticism about all these other things: family trust, negative gearing. Yeah, we. Well, look, we've got we've got a full agenda. We've got to get mm. the tax okay. changes we've already committed to through the parliament. OK, uh, let me ask you about a few other things just uh, quickly. Newington College, uh, they're looking at, or they are going to have uh, women, uh, young girls in their school, and some of the parents are losing their minds about this. What do you think about <laughs> co-ed schools, or some of these established Sydney private schools? Yeah, look, I think it's really a matter for the school, but I think... Um, you know, co-ed uh, education is great, particularly for boys. It's really good for boys to grow up with uh, strong female role models. Uh, and that means not just their teachers and their mothers and their sisters, but also the girls that they're uh, friends with and competing with at school. Um, but like, as I say, it's Newington College, it's up to them. It's just a matter for the school. I, I think it's, you know, the way the modern world is heading, but you know, that the school can make whatever decision it likes. Yeah, I tend to agree. Um, let me finally ask you about <laughs> Michael Egan. Really sad news today that he is, he's died at age 75. He was a, a massive uh, Labor figure in New South Wales, but also Cronulla too. Yeah, he is, uh, um, as you mentioned, he was uh, in the lower house for a number of years before he went into the New South Wales upper house. He's the state's longest serving treasurer. Uh, on coming into government at the beginning of the Car Labor government, he delivered uh, the, the first surplus in many years. He mm. kept the state budget in surplus. He paid down debt. Um, he delivered the Olympics debt free. He was a, a huge figure. And the Car Labor government always had a very good reputation for economic responsibility. That was down to Michael Egan and the decisions he made. He was always very focused on delivering for ordinary people. So the, the you know, increased competition and efficiency that we saw in, in water and other utilities was because he had a focus on making sure people were paying less in their utility bills. After politics, he kept up the public service. He, he went to, on to chair the Centenary Institute that do excellent uh, medical research. He was the longest serving chancellor of Macquarie University. He shook the hands of 43,000 graduating students in his time as chancellor at Macquarie University. He really was a huge figure uh, yeah. in public life in, in New South Wales and dedicated his whole career to public service and I'll miss him personally very much. Yeah, I'm sorry for your loss today. That is quite a CV and quite a memory from you. Tanya, Tanya Plibersek, thanks so much.